they can edit out. <laughs> All right, so this is, uh, I'm Judy Martin, the author of Red, White, and Blue Star Quilts. And I'm going to show you all but one of the quilts from that book. Um, the, um, I want to tell you how the book got started. Go ahead. This is Shakespeare in the Park. A quilt my friend Margie Seek made from my pattern in the Creative Pattern book in the late 90s. I didn't put this quilt on the cover of the book, but this is the most popular pattern I had ever, I've ever done. It's just been, you know, widely embraced. So, um, anyway, the Creative Pattern book went out of print, and so um, I was, I decided I needed to make a Shakespeare in the Park quilt uh, because I was going to have a retrospective exhibit of my quilts, and I thought that that would be um, a good representative example of my quilts. Right. So, uh, before the pandemic started, I started making uh, a queen size version of Shakespeare in the Park. So it would be new. So I would have, I was going to introduce this as a pattern. But by the time I was done cutting this quilt out, I had gotten bored of the pandemic that arrived and decided that even though my last book was my last book, supposedly, I decided I would write another book. So this is the Shakespeare in the Park that, that I put in that book, and I decided, all right, what it has to have in the book, I didn't know what the book was. It was, it has a red and white quilt and a blue and white quilt, and it has these two kinds of stars in it, so I decided I would make a book of red and white and blue and white, Rising, Shining, and uh, Evening Star. The Rising, sh rising, shine, rising, shine. Rise, rising Star quilt has the two stars there, and then the Evening Star, the simple, the simple little star. And I thought, okay, that's the book. It's going to have these two stars only, because of my previous two books have been really hard things. And, um, and then, then it was going to have red and white and blue and white. And then I add, go ahead. Uh, we'll get to the next one. I added red, white, and blue because so many of the things in my files were red, white, and blue. And anyway, red, white, and blue works pretty much uh, in the same quilt that you would use for red, and white, and blue, and white. So this quilt is the red, white, and blue. It is, uh, it was made by Mary Bird, who's in the audience here, and um, quilted by Vicki Bales, also in the audience, and it, it is one in a series, I work in series loosely, and this, uh, I used this star and shadow in another quilt. I added the border with the stripes and shadows. And um, anyway, so I, I did that, and this is the only quilt in the book that I didn't also show in two colors, because a quilt named the red, white, and blue would seem kind of strange with a blue and white quilt, so, so I, didn't, uh, I didn't make another color version of this, but I did make another size version. So the book has lots of, uh, lots of sizes and colors uh, that you can, you know, personalize your quilt with. This quilt is called Sparkler. It was made by Doris Harland and quilted by Cindy Kajawa. And uh, the, this is uh, my star cluster block in the middle of those big stars. And um, that was something I designed in 2014 for a block of the moment. It used to be a block of the month, but I didn't make my deadline, so it became block of the moment. <laughs> anyway, um, so I decided to actually make a star within a star. So I set it in a, a four times the size stars that do the same thing. So there's one block that's the same block as the little one, but it's four times the size. Now this makes a quilt, and I, I give it in two sizes. Both of them look exactly the same in a photograph because they have the same patches and layout, but one has twice the size of patches. So the big quilt is you get a lot of quilt for a little effort. A little quilt you get a lot of effort for a little quilt. <laughs> 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 
This next quilt was also, uh, this was also designed in 2014. That was a really fertile period for my designing because I didn't have a deadline that year. I was kind of taking a gap year. And this one is called um, something. The Amer American Hero. That's right. And I, at the start, I started the design as a, a seven rows of five blocks. I have two sizes of stars, and the small stars are framed out to make the same size block. Anyway, it looked boring when it was just seven rows of five blocks. And then when I when I did it in a diagonal swath, took three quarters of the work out of it and made the quilt more interesting. So sometimes making something easier improves the look. Okay. Yep, less is more. That's just so. All right. This quilt is Paul Revere's Ride. I designed it in uh, 2000 four for my book, Knockout Blocks and Sampler Quilts. That was a block book, so the borders are made out of blocks. Here, the borders were made with um, long strips, with long strips of red and white. Um, this quilt was made by Mary Bird and Vicki Bales. Uh, they are very energetic and enthusiastic quilt makers, and they uh, agreed to do three quilts for this book, so I was thrilled. Anyway, um, this is one of my, my husband's favorites. It's, it, it has a, a little bit of asymmetry due to the, the way the corners are arranged and um, the way the center has the blocks turned. Um, but it's, most, it's mostly a symmetrical quote, but just little details are asymmetrical. Asymmetry is a real theme in my quilts in recent years. And, and when we're done here, will you do my laundry for me? <laughs> oh, okay. I'll cook yours too. I'd rather cook than do laundry. Alrighty. This is uh, Rise and Shine. And uh, if you were at my first lecture, you know that I'm lazy and I like to not bother with matching joints if I don't have to. And so I do all sorts of things to um, avoid having blocks in rows like this where there's joints to it. Well, I also have a, a mantra of do what the quilt is asking for, and what the quilt was asking for was making sashing out of stars. And I didn't make these out of um, blocks. See, I didn't make blocks. This is a unit with, you know, a square surrounded by four triangles and then two rectangles added. This is a unit with half of the star points and then their backgrounds. And then this is, a, if it's at the end of a row, this is just a little narrow unit, otherwise it's one of these again. So that made the joints actually easier and less bulky. And in this version, um, I did it in two colors and I reversed the coloring for this, the, the sashing and the borders. And so that is, um, that's Rise and Shine, and that was quilted by Debbie Trouche, and I pieced it. Um, I was going to make three of these, and I ended up uh, with only two, but the other pattern is in there with a drawing. This one is made by Sally Yakish, it's the same pattern, but here it's got the third color added, and that changes the yardage around, and so, um, and the other thing that I did was, here the sashing, and the borders are made out of the same coloring. And, and I think she did a good job of, of uh, she said that she's, um, um, she doesn't usually follow patterns closely. She likes to make them her own. She thought maybe that was not a good idea when she was making something as a model for a book. And so she restrained herself and, and didn't do that. Yeah. And the, uh, the third version that's in the book as a drawing is just a red and white version that has um, the coloring that was in the border of the first quilt, where the star is dark and the background is light. All right, here's another Mary Bird and Vicki Bales um, uh, example. This is Stars and Stripes Forever. I actually designed this on 
September 11, 2001. Um, and I put it on my website as a block of the moment, or actually a quilt of the moment. And um, it's very, um, the, the units and the blocks are all very simple, but the diagram for uh, assembling those 18 kinds of parts is um, a little complicated. It's not hard. There's no hard sewing in this, right, Mary? There's only, you got to keep your head screwed on straight. And, and I, as you can tell, Mary had her head screwed on just fine. All right. <laughs> That's stars and stripes forever. This next quilt is uh, Starlight Medallion. It's made um, by Sherry McConnell, and, uh, and it, uh, basically a committee. I'll tell you about that in a minute. But this quilt started, the design started with this inner border, and I used two sizes of stars because I'm lazy and then I don't have to match the joints. And uh, so then I uh, decided I like a dark finish on the outer edge of the quilt. And so I reversed the colors for the outer border. It's the same border. And then I came up with the center, which also has a reversal. So it's sort of a nine patch of two colorings of uh, rising stars. Anyway, this quilt, uh, Jerry McConnell uh, wrote a, her comments here. In, in two, 2020, I received an invitation from Judy to make a quilt for her new book, and I promptly said yes. The pattern was designed by Judy, and I was able to source 20 fabrics to give it a scrappy look. As I was working on the quilt, my husband became gravely ill, uh, which resulted in an extended hospital stay. Judy graciously extended my deadline. What was I going to do? Uh, so, so I, uh, I mean, I, I'm going to, you know, I, I could drop the quilt out of the book if I had to. But um, uh, after we were back home, Quilting Collective members Stephanie Crabtree, Alice Taylor, and Kathy Goins came to my aid and helped me finish the blocks. I finished the top and sent it to uh, another member, uh, Linda Lupton, for the quilting. Uh, it was an absolute pleasure to make. Thank you to Judy for the honor of the invitation. Uh, and this is me again. Her husband is doing much better now. But it was, uh, it was you know, stage four cancer kind of a, a diagnosis, so um, he did quite a turnabout. Anyway, that one was a, a little more exciting than you, you'd hope for, and, uh, but it, uh, it turned out just fine. This one is Star Bright. It, it's loosely based on a, a quilt that I had in Stellar Quilts that used compass star blocks. Um, the actual, this is made with uneven sashing. So the sash has a wide, light strip, and then three narrow strips. And then by the, um, by the little stars, the, um, the, the dark colors are next to the block. And by the big uh, stars, the white is next to them. So, Actually, the block size is the same. It, it just, the sashing blends in with it. Um, but anyway, she um, did a good, uh, this was made by Chris Hewlin, a friend of mine. She did a good job of using two shades of blue in order to uh, help you see where the, the um, sashing looks like it's weaving with the setting squares. And this border is, it, is inspired by the previous quilt where I had these stars in two sizes, and this time I put the stars that were in the quilt in, in the size that they are in the quilt. Um, okay. Oh yes, uh, that was built, that was made by Chris Hewlin and quilted by Carol Westerkamp, who quilted a number of the quilts here. Um, All right, this quilt is called Military Band. Uh, my, my dad was in the Navy from 1952 to, or 1935 to 1952 in the, in the band. And he, I have a photo of him somewhere. 
where he's marching down some street, you know, leading the band. And uh, uh, he had, by, the, by 1952, he had uh, four children under the age of six and thought maybe band wasn't a good career idea for a family man, so he uh, transferred into electronics. He was the last one to get out of the band. When you, It's hard for the, the military to find band members. Uh, because they um, they have a skill already learned, and um, so he got out of the band and, and had a career then in electronics, first in the Navy and then in, as a civilian. Anyway, I designed this quilt in his honor. Uh, he didn't get to see it because he it had a pretty short life, but um, uh, this is inspired by this quilt over here, the brown and pink quilt that um, I made uh, for my book, Stellar Quilts. I've done a number of things that looked oval or circular, and uh, so that's, that was what I did in this design. It makes for not a lot of piecing to do here. And then the border is like the last border you saw, where I've got the rising stars and the evening stars only. This time I had to space them out because um, uh, the way, the, the size of the block and the interior of the quilt. All right. So usually my quilts, when they have piece borders, have um, elements from the interior of the quilt, and they usually have a different coloring because that was what makes it a border. Otherwise, it'd just be more blocks. So, um, and I would like you to notice, I had that fabric in two colorways on, that's on the back of the quilt. And I matched the print. Yeah. Nobody would notice that, but I did. So I have to tell you. <laughs> I am lazy. Uh, all right, this one was a design called Star Spangled Quilt. That was a block in the block book in 1998. And, um, and here I made it into a quilt. I put, it, it's an asymmetrical block. These are called grand blocks. One, you know, this has six blocks in it with five stars in a block. And um, doing that is um, a way to arrange things before you put it in the set. So the set in this is just putting blocks side by side, but they do things because of what I have in the corners of the blocks and, and all that kind of stuff. And since this was asymmetrical, um, I put the, the little corner squares of stars uh, just in two corners because it, it helped to balance the book. Well, you got the easy one. <laughs> this is just a one block version of that. And um, this, this was, these were both made by um, Marilyn Deppie and quilted by Carol Westerkamp. And um, so this one is less scrappy and it's just a little quick one day to piece it, table topper. Okay. Oh, yes. So, so she put a, a, a sort of flag uh, panel on the back with the Pledge of Allegiance. This quilt is um, July fireworks that I designed in 2017. It was made by Chris Hewlin and quilted by Carol Westerkamp. Uh, when I was designing this, well, I, the stories that I have for these, since I didn't make them, I don't have a lot of stories about them taking 25 years or anything. So uh, this, this is, um, what I have to tell you about them is the design, because that's what I did. So anyway, I started out with the, the evening star and I wanted to frame it with flying geese. And when I drew that in the computer, and spaced them apart with plain sashing, I could see it looked a little curved. And squint at it or stand back, you'll see this is like a double wedding ring. Um, and I enhanced that effect by making these, um, the sashes have the stars at, uh, at the, set, uh, the corner squares, and then I put these contrasting, the contrasting squares in the block help that look curved. And I did that to enhance that effect. And then the border echoes it. It's parallel to these, but in a darker color. 
I reversed the coloring there. And um, so there you have just fine. All this is made out of is squares, rectangles, and triangles. But it sure looks curved if you get far enough away from it. I, I tend to design for um, photograph because it's going to be in a book and that's. So, so I'm, I try to also consider things like how it would fit a bed or whatever. But, uh, all right, this stunner is the Stars Over the States, and it was made by your own Neil Thompson and Tammy Klein. And um, I don't know if I I don't know if Tammy realized that there were 140 stars in this quilt and then got Neil to help her, or, <laughs> or what. But when I realized there were 140 stars in this quilt, I went and designed a one-block version of it. It has the same border and the same block, but only one of the blocks, and it only has 36. Um, yeah, anyway, this, uh, this started out like my staggered star border, and, um, and I changed the border so that the red never touches the blue because the star points here, the star points touch, which means there's joints. But I wasn't so, and Tammy was, so psh, I can do that, right? All right, anyway, um, I just love the way this turned out. It's, um, it was languishing in my um, someday file for 10 years or more before, um, before I put it in a book or anywhere. And um, I just I, I just love it. I love what you did with it. I love how strong the red and the blue are. Red and blue on the color wheel are both um, the same value at the same saturation. Yellow, yellow, you know how yellow always seems lighter than red or blue? Uh, well, yellow is the lightest color, violet is the darkest color, and red and blue are the same value. And so it's really hard to get a strong red and a strong blue that can be next to each other and that don't run together. So um, so that so that star, with the, the white star didn't let those two ever touch, so that helped that pattern. 